Hello, I'm Chai Hoffilenia. Welcome to Rappler. After being drawn to the pork barrel controversy on account of a list of lawmakers who allegedly transacted with pork barrel scam mastermind Janet Napolis, Rehabilitation Secretary Ping Lakson was defended by the president. Critics of government say the pace of rehabilitation in Yolanda-hit areas has remained painfully slow. And this is six months after the typhoon struck. And it hasn't helped that the rehabilitation secretary has been distracted from the more urgent tasks at hand. We will be talking to rehabilitation secretary Ping Lakson about his priorities and how he intends to refocus on urgent rehabilitation work. Good afternoon, secretary. Good afternoon, Chai. We're glad that you could accommodate us in your busy schedule. Yeah, thank you very much, too. Um, I'd like to ask first, um, you're, you met recently with, with President Aquino. Um, how did that meeting go and what exactly did you discuss? That was two Thursdays ago. Mm -hmm. We met, it was a cordial, honest, frank, and respectful meeting that we had. And it addressed a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. And that triggered the cabinet meeting, the special cabinet meeting on Yolanda last Friday. Yes. And I'm now more confident that the rehabilitation pace will accelerate. Um, your critics and those who've been watching um, government efforts have perennially been saying that it hasn't been moving fast enough. And uh, I guess one, one complicating factor was the, the Napolis list. Um, how, do you, how do you reconcile this? Well, that is not quite correct. No? If we go by international standards or past experiences in other countries, Katrina, for example, it took them four years before they saw initial tangible results of rehabilitation. <clears throat> Banda Aceh, it took them eight years. In fact, Pakuntoro uh, had five months to negotiate for his powers with uh, President Bang Bang. I had only two nights, <clears throat> and we're barely, or more than five months uh, in office. Mm -hmm. And yet, <clears throat> we've done uh, quite a lot. It's only a matter of communicating this to the people. That is the reason why there's this uh, misimpression that nothing is moving, or if at all, uh, moving very slowly. There was a recent interview mm -hmm. with Mayor Romualdez, mm -hmm. and he said that, and even Oxfam pointed this out, yeah. that money from the national government was not filtering down to the local government level. And this has affected um, their work. It Do you is agree? slowing down. In fact, Mayor Romualdez received from DILG, <coughs> Secretary Marojas, uh, 833, I was informed, for the repairs of the city hall, public market, and civic centers. <clears throat> uh, so far, the Interior Department has already downloaded 1.2 billion pesos to the LGUs. <clears throat> it's actually 2 billion, no? because 291 or 260 million was downloaded to, uh, to repair police stations, jail, uh, jails and uh, fire stations. No. When was and, the two billion downloaded? Ah, uh, this was uh, around three weeks ago. It was downloaded. The 491 million pesos will be implemented by the DPWH because uh, this would involve the totally damaged municipal halls. The Interior Department is only in charge of downloading resources to LGUs with partially damaged municipal halls. This has been accomplished already. DOH has downloaded half of the 1 billion pesos for the repair of the rural health units. <clears throat> they uh, continue to monitor the progress of the rehabilitation or reconstruction work, and they will uh, further uh, download the remaining 500 million for the repair of RHUs. So you're saying that DBM is no longer a bottleneck because that was that was the allegation and uh, it is not a bottleneck. And and specifically I think Mayor Ramales also said that um, Secretary Abad has become a problem. No, I don't think so. Because uh, Secretary Abad during cluster group uh, meetings because we have we did a cluster framework approach, no? We formed five clusters, <coughs> namely livelihood, infrastructure, resettlement, social services, and support. Uh, Secretary Abad co-chairs the support, uh, or support uh, cluster along with uh, NEDA Director General Balisakan. And they are in charge of uh, addressing the cross-cutting policy issues and concerns. And that's what they're doing. 
because there are emerging issues in the course of our rehabilitation. Actually, there is no master rehabilitation plan yet submitted. Yes. Why? Yes. Because uh, according to 10121, RA 10121, this is the law that created the National Disaster Risk uh, Reduction Management Council. Uh, we will have to wait for the OCD, the Office of Civil Defense, to submit for approval by the president the post-disaster needs assessment. It's very bureaucratic. Very uh, it's in accordance with the provision of law. So we cannot do anything about it. Having said that, we somehow uh, went around the, that provision because aside from the cluster framework approach, we did a bottom-up approach. What we did was to go down to the LGUs, <coughs> encourage them to submit their own local versions of uh, rehabilitation plans, which they did. Uh, to date, four have already submitted. Cebu, in this order, no? Cebu, Leyte, uh, Western Samar, and then Tacloban. All four have already submitted or pre and presented to us along with the, uh, at least the cluster heads, their uh, localized version of the rehabilitation plans. We're, we have scheduled Eastern Summer next week mm -hmm. because next week we're going to sign off. I mean, when we say we, the cabinet clusters uh, and uh, this office will start signing off the, uh, the rehabilitation plans as presented to us because there are numbers that need to be reconciled. And this was the essence, or this was one of the issues that was resolved uh, during the cabinet meeting last Friday. Mm -hmm. It was a special cabinet meeting on Yolanda, triggered by some issues that was presented to media, and uh, which I don't regret, uh, by the way, because uh, I, I feel that uh, uh, one positive uh, result or outcome that uh, you know, that emerged yeah. after that, uh, that issue uh, concerning one or two or three uh, cabinet secretaries who were not so cooperative. No? Somehow it uh, has sped up uh, things. And now we're there right now. I'm confident that by June, at least middle of June, mm -hmm. we'll be starting to implement the projects because the projects have been identified. That's good news. Yes, that's very good news. Uh, we're talking of resettlement, livelihood, education sector, meaning classrooms no, to, be, uh, to be reconstructed, and of course the, uh, the other components, which is uh, identification of multi-hazards. Because we are uh, coordinating with DNR and DOST also to fast track the multi-hazard mapping, because we need to identify lands that are suitable for resettlement. Mm -hmm. It's not as simple as, you know, uh, herding people in the high-risk areas whose houses were destroyed and resettling them to available uh, real estate, uh, pieces of real estate. It's not as simple as that. We'll have to consider that the lands uh, to where they will be resettled are free from hazards. Mm -hmm. And when we talk of hazards, there are several. It's not, it's not just tsunami, storm surge, we're talking of, you know, fault lines, volcanoes, landslides, tsunami, storm surge, it's soil liquefaction. It's a menu of disasters. Because if we want to build back better, we'll have to address uh, climate change. Because we have to be prepared for the future disasters. Yes. You know, as, as, uh, as I was saying, you know, it took four years and eight years in other countries to fully rehabilitate. Allow me to backtrack yeah. a bit because um, if, if disasters are, are coming and mm. June is just around the corner and we anticipate anything, the worst that could happen. Um, and I I'd also say that maybe it's critical for you to be working very closely and in, um, be in good terms with members of the cabinet. Oh, yeah. um, has the recent controversy affected your working relationship with, with them? Not at all. Especially those that you mentioned as well, being part of the list? You know, they should be part of a comprehensive effort. Because if one or two cabinet secretaries are uncooperative or, you know, deliberately slow, it will affect the whole plan. Yes. Because, say, this is just an example. I'm not pointing to any particular cabinet secretary. Right. If, we, if the resettlement cluster is ready to resettle 
assuming that there's available uh, land for all the housing units to be resettled. But, and there's enough uh, jobs available or livelihood available in the new resettlement sites. And uh, there's enough classrooms to be built in the new resettlement site. But say if DNR and DOST are not ready to identify the suitable lands for resettlement, where would we go? We cannot resettle because, you know, if we resettle them to areas that are not suitable or that are not uh, free from hazards, then we're putting the, people's, uh, the people uh, in harm's way. I mean, the survivors. So, and government will not allow that. The president's call is very clear. Build back better. And Yolanda is the new normal, and we'll have to be prepared for another Yolanda, if not a stronger Yolanda. Mayor Romualdez mentioned something about the, the quality of the, of the land. That mm -hmm. It's difficult to find areas where to, where to move them. And he said that um, there has to be, a, dis there has to be um, a clearer definition of temporary shelter. Uh, because now, mm -hmm. they've been there for what? They'll be, they'll be probably living there for years, and yet it's still called temporary. We are addressing that problem. I have, I have coordinated with DSWD Secretary Dingo Suleiman. This was three weeks ago. And we decided, as a matter of policy, to dismantle the tents, start dismantling the tents, and start building, at least in the meantime, that we're looking for suitable lands as resettlement areas, to start building transitional shelters or even core shelters. This is different from bunkhouses? No, diff bunkhouses is a thing of the past. Okay. Uh, I made this very clear with uh, Secretary Babe Singson. No more bunkhouses. We agreed on that. Because bunkhouses, you know, the culture of Filipinos, especially in the rural areas, in the remote towns of Central Philippines, you know, they're not used to condo type uh, buildings, you know, sharing the same building, separated by, by walls. And this, in this case, in the case of bunkhouses, they're separated by very thin walls, one fourth inch thick, uh, plywood, not even plyboard, and we're not used to that. So it will uh, invite uh, social problems later on. Uh, international standards, you know, those knowledgeable in the rehabilitation of in, in, in foreign countries, dealing with foreign disaster, disasters in foreign countries, they told us that uh, tents are only good for two months. And uh, bank houses or barracks or temporary shelters they're only good for two years. Beyond that, uh, there'll be a lot of social problems. You know, uh, children quarreling with, with each other and then the parents will get involved and then the wife taking a bath in a common bathroom and somebody will be suspected of, you know, uh, doing some uh, naughty things and then the husbands will get involved. These all sorts of problems, you know, past experiences in other countries uh, would tell us not to build bank houses or not to allow people to stay in barracks or bank houses more than two years. So what do you do with those who are currently occupying bank houses? They stay there until... Uh, well, they stay there until the transitional shelters, assuming that the permanent shelters will not be ready by then. We need... The National Housing Authority has identified 214,000, more than 214,000 housing units to be built. And we're only talking of people, of survivors, who used to stay in the high-risk zones. You know? We're no longer talking of no-build zones. That's downright impract impractical. So we have reclassified. So you're doing away with the no We're doing zone away policy. with no -build zone. The first person to protest against the no -build zone policy is the Secretary of Tourism. He told the cabinet, I cannot imagine a beach resort being put up uh, more than 40 meters away from the beach or the coastline. And that makes a lot of sense because if you declare an area a no-build zone, then uh, when it says no-build zone, then it's not just no dwelling zone, but no-build zone because that's the policy. So we're doing away with that. We're uh, classifying areas into high-risk zones, controlled zones, and safe zones. Controlled meaning we can... Uh, do some uh, mitigating or mitigation measures like mangroves, uh, beach forest, uh, sea walls, 
or even houses in stilts, uh, those sort of, sorts of things. But that will, the success of that will depend on the capability of the local government unit. Yes, because the local government units will be the ones to issue ordinances uh, declaring or uh, they will issue the land use plans in their respective localities. So it will entail close coordination with the local government executives. And the police. We're doing that. And the police, because they're the ones enforcing. But we're doing that. That's the reason why you know, we decided to incentivize the local government executives who are proactive enough, more than the others, to prepare their own rehabilitation plans. It's just a matter of reconciling the numbers, yes, that you know, was, because so that was a point that was uh, that was raised that yeah. um, various government agencies have different numbers and they don't match with the numbers at the local level. Understandably so, because you know these are all moving targets. From the point of view of local government units, projects keep on coming. Uh, construction of uh, classrooms, housing units, you know, they're. They're, they're, they're undergoing uh, or they're taking place in so many areas. So every day we have to keep uh, pace with all these developments. For example, we have registered at, in my office at OPAR, we have registered a total of 1,407 projects. And of those registered projects, when I say project or projects, 1,407 projects, uh, when we talk of one project, it could mean five or seven or 10 school buildings. It could mean 50 housing units. It's just as if one project would only be equivalent to one housing unit, no. So if we have registered 1,407 projects, that's a lot, no. And right now, uh, those are the commitments, no. Uh, ongoing projects, uh, if I remember my, my numbers, uh, 500, 500 plus. I think 513 or 517, or 273, I'm sorry. 273 projects are already ongoing. This is from the public and the private sector. So things are moving. Uh, you know, we're, we're being drowned by the propaganda line of people's search, you know, of uh, the militants, of those that I'd be more blunt, you know, of groups that would hurt people from some parts of Samar, not hit by Yolanda, bringing in people who are not in the first place survivors. We've proven this, we've validated this. We received the intelligence reports from the intelligence community in the area, and we have validated. How in fact- you, How do you control this movement or this migration? Well, tell them in their faces that they, what they're doing is not, uh, is not proper because they are using people who are not survivors and who were not hit by Typhoon Yolanda in the first place. They're bringing them to Tacloban City to demonstrate, to stage rallies, demonstrations against the government. And what they're doing is they are demanding some very popular issues, you know, like just give 40,000 per family and let them build on their own. That's very popular. And they know that government will not give in to those kinds of demands. Why? Because it's impractical. Because if we want to uh, build back better, we will not do that. Because we will have to resettle them in an organized manner, in a more methodo uh, methodological, well, systematic manner, you know, and based on science. Another demand is to allow them to build in the no-build zones, you know, or anywhere near the coastlines. What if they're hit by another storm surge of, you know, five meters, uh, five meter high storm surge? Then what will government uh, be answerable for? Government will be responsible for, for uh, uh, deaths of people after Yolanda. And government is not ready to accept responsibility for that. So by, by when exactly can we, can we see qualitative changes because when um, when we last visited Tacloban it mm. still looked like a war zone um, yeah, yes. very soon as I said since Tacloban City has already presented to us their Tacloban City master rehabilitation plan it's not it won't take a long time before implementation uh, happens no? and we're looking at at middle of June we, because we're doing this 
simultaneously. Even in the absence of an approved PDNA, we were already doing that. Uh, that's why when PDNA was finally presented last Friday, uh, Tacloban, Leyte, Western Samar, uh, and, uh, and Cebu have already presented their rehabilitation plans ready to be vetted. And once we reconcile all the numbers, because we're getting uh, from different sources, from the cluster groups, because once they submit their action plans and programs, there are numbers there. We're getting our numbers from the local government units. We're getting our numbers from the PDNA. We're getting our numbers from the data collated by my office. But what now if there are different numbers? We can easily reconcile because uh, we can easily explain why such differences in, in the figures occur. Are you happy with the PDNA? Uh, I'm not ready yet because to, to do just the PD, PDNA because uh, it was presented and we have not really examined uh, in detail the, the figures. No, the, my staff is, uh, is doing that right now. Um, another another mm -hmm. issue that has been raised, one concern mm -hmm. is that it's of course politics. Yeah. Um, and one explanation for the discrepancy in numbers is uh, according to some sectors, is yeah. that it's really not politics more than politics, it's incompetence. No, that's Do you not, agree? that is not fair. That is not fair. It's not incompetence. It's normal that numbers will vary, that there will be discrepancies. You know. uh, if we reconcile or if numbers are very similar, then we should start suspecting that they're just, you know, uh, conniving with each other or conspiring with each other just to make numbers uh, 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 sync or, or, be, or be in sync with each other. And I'll, I'll, be, I'll start to be suspicious. But if there are differences in numbers that can easily be justified or explained, then uh, to me, that's, that's really the, the normal thing to, to happen. And speaking of politics, I, I just have to ask this. Um, well, if somebody is yeah. saying, of, or if a local politician, I'll, I'll be direct to the point. If Mayor Romualdez is telling you that there's incompetence in the national government agencies, mm -hmm. well, I think that's an unfair uh, indictment of uh, the national government agencies. So you're happy with the... Especially after Friday, I'm very happy. <laughs> so Friday was really <laughs> <laughs> crucial. Just the clean chair, you know. After Friday's uh, Friday cabinet the meeting, point. yes, I think so. In uh, fact, yeah. the following day, I, I thank the president for calling that special cabinet meeting, because uh, he started, you know, he decided to take matters in his own hands because he directed a specific uh, department heads to to do it now. Uh, and do it fast, you know. I'm curious though, the, your disclosure of the lists, uh, of the names on the list, um, had a direct effect on, on the president because some of them, like Butch Abad and, and other names that you disclose, are close to him. You know, Chai, it's very difficult to lie on national TV. <laughs> it's very difficult, you know, and I won't do that. If I'm asked a question, yeah. either I don't answer it or answer correctly and truthfully. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me those questions anymore, you know, because our, our, uh, our topic now is Yolanda. No, but it's related. I was just, I was just curious about how uh, it was getting in the way of work or how it helped push no, things. No, no. It has not uh, gotten in the way. Uh, if there was distraction, it was very temporary. Okay. No, because, alam Chai, I will have to explain to you. No. Pork barrel is very close to my heart. Not close in the sense that I advocate because you don't have yeah, I don't have it, and I, I fought against it right. for the longest time. You know, I delivered a skating privilege speech in 2003. Nobody listened. Mm -hmm. And I was all against it because I knew the shenanigans you know, involved in the implementation. I knew how hypocritical it is. You know? I know how much of government or taxpayers' money is wasted in the pork barrel system. That's why. You know, and that's the reason why Mrs. Napoles decided to bring to me the documents that she had at the time. Because according to her, she could not trust anyone. And she wanted it out because she was about to undergo surgery. That's the reason. And I kept it, you know. Yeah. And 
I wasn't telling it even to my wife. I never divulged that I have I had those documents because I I had an agreement with them. And of course, uh, she could not come out of the get out of the hospital. So I was talking to them right here in my office, and I told them, "You better go back to your wife. If she promises or she's committed to tell all, it must be a tell all story, not this one because this is not tell all. This looks like a counter affidavit uh, of a defendant." No. While she was divulging details of trans several transactions, this is not what I can uh, determine as a tell-all story. You know? And this should be backed by documents. And so in the meantime that I was keeping it and waiting for them for uh, what I told them to go back and discuss this among yourselves, among family members then come back to me if you're ready, really, or decided to tell all. Because at the time, I, I told him, I cannot even show this to President Aquino or to Ombudsman Morales. Mm -hmm. Because if you're aiming for immunity or you're aiming to be a state witness, then you must, really be, you must really tell all. And then when I presented this, when I present this to the Ombudsman, who in the first place has the authority to, do, to uh, decide whether or not she's qualified to be granted immunity. And I told them very clearly, I cannot promise you anything. I'll just bring this to her. But at my level, I don't see the point of bringing this to the Ombudsman or even to President Aquino. That's why I kept it uh, to myself yeah. until a member of media yeah. informed me early morning or that same night yeah. when Secretary de Lima met with Mrs. Napoles. I was informed by media, there's a meeting, or there was a meeting uh, between Mrs. Napoles and Justice Secretary de Lima. And, and Mrs. lasted Napoles, for five hours. Yes, and Mrs. Napoles informed the Secretary of Justice that she gave you a copy, and she wanted me to confirm it. And I wouldn't lie. So I told her, yes, I, I have a copy. In fact, I have forgot, I've already forgotten about my copy, but since you asked me, yes, I have a copy, I look for it because I even, I have forgotten where I kept it. And then uh, th that started the whole, you know, uh, what you said, distraction. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And it was a month earlier. Yes. Uh, that the, you had uh, a copy. Yeah, then the meeting. I wasn't uh, talking about it. But when, you know, it, it came out and I was asked, I would have to respond. Because I'd be lying to, to you, uh, to your colleagues, if I would keep on denying, and then later on, they'll find out that I had the copy. Did the so, president raise this at all in, during your meeting? No, it wasn't. During your conversation with him? Uh, the personal conversation. Yes. Yeah, of course, he, he just mentioned in passing about the, the list. In, in fact, uh, there was, when was this? Uh, after the meeting, and I think after, before or after the cabinet meeting, I, I'm not uh, sure anymore. He just uh, texted me. Uh, why are you, may I ask, why are you still being quoted on Napoles? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I told him, uh, I was being invited and the invitation uh, came much ahead of this issue. And the understanding was uh, a discussion or a forum on Yolanda. Mm -hmm. And when I sat down to be interviewed, all they asked was Napoles. <laughs> In fact, when I, I don't know if, uh, if I think there's a rappler uh, representative in that Kapihan at the Diamond Hotel. And, you know, I was the one who, who pleaded to them, can we discuss Yolanda? Because I noticed that all the questions centered on Napoles. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I, when I told them, can, we, can you ask me questions on Yolanda? Because that's what uh, I was invited here for. Uh, and then when they started uh, asking questions on Yolanda, I noticed the uh, the TV cameras, you know, the the red lights uh, were off, and the crew, the members of the crew were sleeping. They wouldn't record while you they were talking record. about Yolanda. And then when I uh, arrived in the office, my staff, you know, met me and, and told me, "Sir, we were watching you. You were on live TV until you requested uh, to discuss Yolanda." So that, that's that's the story. I, I got drawn into, into this, uh, not on purpose, not really on my own liking 
or on my own doing. It was natural, but as I said, no, I wouldn't shy away from this topic because... Uh, it's something you feel uh, passionately yeah. about. Yes, yes. Okay, so it, it appears that after that cabinet meeting and the meeting with the president, mm. uh, you're, you're now uh, refocused and moving full steam ahead on... on I've not lost focus, no. Okay. I just got distracted a bit, you know. <laughs> okay, maybe just the last question. Yeah. Um, what would be your top priorities in the next... Because by November, we would hit one year. Uh, it would be the anniversary of Yolanda. All four sectors. All four sectors. Because they always come together. They should go together. No? Resettlement. When we resettle the survivors in a 250 kph uh, wind-resistant uh, housing units no? and intensity 9 resistant uh, or earthquake resistant, uh, they should be, you know, the other components must be there livelihood, education, health, you know. So that should be put together in one piece. It's, that's, that's the reason why uh, people should understand us, why, you know, we cannot do it in one month. We cannot do it in two months. And it's also the reason why Banda Aceh, you know, uh, took eight years to fully rehabilitate, took Katrina, in, uh, in New Orleans, uh, eight years to fully re uh, rehabilitate. Uh, Haiti, uh, four years after, has yet to see the road to recovery. I was told that 200,000 people are still living in tents. Four years after uh, the Haiti uh, was that, uh, earthquake. So are we slow? If we compare us with the other uh, disaster-stricken areas, my question is, are we slow? But the Oxfam um, representative... The Oxfam representative was here yeah. uh, uh, yesterday. They were explaining to us you know, the, the implication of their statement to media. So is he taking it back? Because no, what he not said, taking it back, what, but just clarifying. Yeah, because what he said essentially was mm. that Given the amount of uh, the number of NGOs who have the ability to, mm -hmm. to participate and the levels of, um, of aid money that have come in, the, the rehabilitation should have been faster compared to other areas. That's, that, that was not what they told us yesterday. They told us that uh, it was, I think, a uh, supposition you know, that if government does this, then this will happen. If government fails to do this, then this could happen. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. But that was also on record. The interview was, was recorded. Yeah, it was more of a hypothesis than, you know, factual uh, 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 statement uh, of, of events, of developments. Okay. That's what they told us. All right. Thank you very much, um, Secretary Lakson. There, there's a lot of things going on, and we will be watching very closely. Yeah, and so. uh, if you say that things will become more evident and visible by June, we will, we will check again in, in June. Please do so. Uh, you've you been listening to, to us through this um, conversation with Secretary Lakson. Thank you very much for joining us.